my friends, it's Manny Rodriguez coming back at you with another episode of Deep True Crime. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the top stories around true crime that are going on today. And so if you're new to my channel and that is what you like to stay on top of, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. That way you get notified when I do upload or even go live, especially if you like to stay on top of those things. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me today. And I want to share with you. Yes, this live can be a little 30, 45 minutes with all the updates. But then I will also go back and separate each story. That way you're only getting the stories if that's the particular story you want to talk about or hear about. So please, thank you. Welcome to my channel. So happy that you have decided to stop by on your way over, wherever you're going. And so today we got a few things in the news that we're gonna wanna update you on. Okay, we're gonna continue the Gabby Petito update. I think that is key until we find Brian. But speaking of the Gabby Petito, when we get to that fourth one down, it's another, it's, it's, this is why I do this to make people aware of what goes on out there. It's, it's sad, you know, that people are capable of some of these things, period. And so I want to share exactly that, what it is that you should be, you know, being, being aware of, because it's easy to trust you know, if you don't really know, right? It's easy to trust if you really don't know who to trust. And so that's exactly why I do this because I want to share with you some of the things that are going on out there. The, to me, it's key, okay? To me, it's key that you know what's going on out there to help you be aware, be alert. And, you know, sometimes you have to be skeptical about what you hear and what you see. That's the purpose of Deep True Crime, to let you know what goes on out there to help you be alert. Be alert. You know, of course, sure, there's a lot of people you can trust, but unfortunately, there are people you cannot trust when it comes to heinous crimes as well. And so I want to share with you the Gabby Petito update. I want to share with you the Robert Durst. You know, he gets life. And if you know him, he was a longtime actor. Yesterday, we talked about the Alex murder, and I talked about how he is kind of a, not really a suspect when it came to his wife and son's death. He is a person of interest on that, and I wanted to continue on that because that was in the news, and I want to share another heinous act by, by a, a control freak who was very violent to his wife, and he sets her on fire while she's live streaming just heartbreaking just heartbreaking and we're going to talk about that because he is convicted and he gets the death penalty and so we're going to hit on a few of those things thank you for being a part of this today so let's go ahead and dive into it first thing i want to talk about is the gabby petito update of course so i wanted to share this because it came across my desk Former prosecutor reveals details of how Gabby Petito's body was found after analyzing crime scene footage. And so they were sharing because obviously, you know, the Teton County coroner, he released the autopsy of Gabby Petito. And so, of course, more details are coming out of how she was found. And so Dr. Brent Blue, he revealed that her cause of death was strangulation and he also shared that her body had been out in the wilderness for three to four weeks before she was found and so due to the statutes in wyoming he couldn't say more right it's an ongoing investigation so he needs to be tight-lipped about this and so i wanted to to kind of update a little more of what came out Okay, the helicopter footage of the Gabby Petito, the crime scene was analyzed. And so, Kurt Morgan, 
longtime Salt Lake County prosecutor, he analyzed that footage and he was sharing a little of it. Okay, and so he said, one of the things I've been seeing in this story is a history of these individuals getting into fights and she was attacked. And so, and she attacked him. And this is something that he, that, uh, you know, he's heard. So he says, I don't see that here. Meaning that he doesn't see that she attacks him and why this would have occurred. Because some people who are taking Brian's side are kind of saying she started this thing. So he's kind of debunking this. I don't see that here. I don't see where they got into a fight and she attacks him. And he says, all I see is one individual who suffered the damage and no evidence of injury created by her. Now, this is, of course, on the crime scene. And so he said he did not notice marks on the ground that might indicate that Petito was fighting her attacker. And so I think this is key because a lot of stuff has been going on, been talked about. Okay, so at least someone's there to say it does not look like she started this fight that may have caused this, right? So he's kind of debunking that. And so I think that is key. And so Morgan claimed that the scene suggests that Petito's killer acted quickly and did not stick around. Acted quickly and was gone. Okay, this was quick. This was not sitting here for five or six hours trying to figure out how to conceal a crime. He, it, he, according to Morgan, he's saying that it happened and Petito's boyfriend was gone. And so, as we know, he remains a person of interest. We're going to hit on that person of interest, POI, a little more as well in another case here shortly. And so, he's only facing charges for allegedly using her bank card without authorization. Why, you know... Granted, the article says allegedly because he hasn't been convicted. I, you know, probably it's the right thing to say to do. Hmm. And so he says, Morgan continues and says, because Petito was strangled, there could be fingerprints or DNA at the scene. And those things I would have to look at very, very carefully as a prosecutor. Okay. He did, Dr. Blue, in his conf, press conference, did confirm that there was DNA that was taken from Petito's body, but he did not speak on any possible suspects. He literally, he literally kept running away from, because John Walsh asked that question twice, do you think that Brian had it? He kind of rephrased it, phrased it a second time. Do you think that Brian Laundrie is the one that's guilty? Like, in your mind, is there any doubt that Brian Laundrie, I cannot comments on that and so brian laundry's parents according to gabby petito's mom according to gabby petito's mom i'll share that with you she believes that brian laundry's parents are revealing big clue that he's still alive this is according to the, now who doesn't think that he's still alive if he was dead, I would think they would have found him by now. I would think. So, I think everyone thinks this, but here's what they say about it. Why they believe that they know what's going on. Let's see here. They share Petito's family has now criticized Laundry's parents for what they consider a failure to cooperate with the case. And so her mother, Nicole, that shares, you know, they know most of the information. I believe that. I don't know why they're doing this to us. I feel like we just, we need to just know at this point. Like they know stuff that they're not sharing. I, yes, I totally agree that the laundry parents know stuff that, they're not sharing. Man, that's so obvious they know stuff that they're not sharing, right? I mean, it's so obvious in that particular case. And so now this is thought to refer to claims 
that the Laundry family has provided insufficient information about Brian Dirty Laundry. And so this, you know, feeds into the accusations that Brian Laundry may have received assistance with his disappearance. Yep. Yep. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I've been saying that I truly believe now again, until we get all the facts, a lot of this is speculation. What they're sharing is speculation. What I'm sharing a lot of speculation. It's how I feel. I think this is key. So her Gabby's dad even says if they do know something and they're withholding that and they don't want to let us know it's cruel. Well, <laughs> obviously these people are not caring at this time. They're not caring. Sure, they do believe that it's tragic that something like this would happen to her, but it's their son they're protecting. They're going to continue to protect. I truly don't think they care to share with everyone what they do know. At this stage, though, they would probably be facing some criminal actions against them. Right? I, I, I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And so... You know, it's definitely, it's definitely bad. It's bad. And we got to figure out what's going on. But the only way to actually do that is Brian to come forward. Now you got cadaver dogs chasing him, looking for him. You know, dog the bounty hunters probably still out there somewhere. I think he said he's back in on, on the search. And so, hmm, you know, truth is at the end of the day, where is Brian, right? Where is Brian? That's, that's the true story. That's what we want to know. Where is Brian Laundry? So next topic that we want to talk about is something that's been in the news for a long time. We're talking years. We're talking years. And truth is, if it wasn't for the HBO, the jinx, we don't know if he would have been caught. We do not know if if Robert Durst would have been caught. And so Robert Durst, he's sentenced to life for the killing of his, his of his friend back in 2000. Now he is said to kill th have killed 3 people. But he's a, he's sentenced to life in prison for murdering his friend Susan Berman. And so Robert Durst, the real estate heir suspected in a string of killings over nearly four decades, was sentenced to life in prison without parole for murdering his friend and confidant, because they were really close, Susan Berman. And Susan, obviously taken way too soon, and another, of course a very sad story in and of itself. And so... Jury convicted this guy, he's 78 years old. They convicted him of first degree murder and he's gonna get life. Now granted, life is not gonna be too much longer. He's already up there in age. And so, he, you know, he most likely doesn't have 20 more years. So now, see, prosecutors argued that Durst had shot Berman at point, at point blank range in her home to prevent her from telling police what she knew about the 1982 disappearance of his wife, Kathy Durst. Kathy McCormick Durst. That's what he was originally, for, like, because she disappeared, and of course he knew something. And so, but they had enough evidence about this one, okay? But he kind of throws himself under the bus. When they're doing this documentary... HBO, the jinx, he says too much. He says too much on his self. Let's go ahead and I'm going to play this for you. This was from the documentary, the jinx. It was an HBO show. And I hope I'm able to play this because I'm going to play this. One second. Or maybe this is the bathroom. Yeah, that's... You're all right. This is the bathroom. Okay. So he's looking for a bathroom. He's looking for a bathroom. And 
the the producer part of or the part of the team, the producing team, his the the you know or they have they already have them all mic'd up, right? So Robert, also known as Bob, Bob is short for Robert. His microphone continues to record while he's in the bathroom. I don't think they did this intentionally, but they they didn't stop it. Listen to this. It's damning evidence against himself. Okay? Listen to this. There it is. Your cord. Notice that he says, there it is, you're caught. caught. He's pretty much talking to himself now. Or maybe this is the bathroom. Yeah, that's... You're all right, this is the bathroom. There it is, you're caught. Did you hear that right there? He said, what the heck did I do? I'm not going to curse. And he said, right there, killed them all, of course. And there was three of them. There was three of them that he was convicted of killing, or that he was accused of killing. So let's finish this out. Pretty eerie, huh? So, The Jinx was a documentary, an HBO documentary, on this. And, and basically, The Jinx was a documentary documentary to kind of investigate the the 1982 unsolved, you know, disappearance of his of his wife, and then the 2000 execution style killing of the of writer Susan Berman, who he was ultimately now convicted of. And a year later, in 2001, the death and dismemberment of Durst's neighbor, Morris Black. This was in Texas. And so he was thought to have something to do with all three of these. And so HBO was doing a documentary on this, uh, around this whole thing. And so now he was suspected in the involvement of that, and then they... You know, then actually after this jinx, that kind of made it even harder for him to, to be innocent because he actually did go to court. He was tried previously and he and he was off. He was not he was found not guilty. He was found not guilty of this. And so it was hard to prove that he was, a, a you know, especially after being not guilty of or at least getting a kind of getting away with it. So. You would imagine that they would have probably thought this would even be harder, but no, this time they actually got him. 
This time they got him. This time, and he gets life in prison. Do you think that he did it? I, I, outside of the court, I definitely think that he, that, I mean, this has been ongoing for so long and they had people, they had evidence, they had stuff. So obviously, you know, he did get, he was not convicted in the first one of, I want to say of, of, uh, the disappearance, but now they have a more on that. And so that is in the news this week for sure. So I want to hit on this Alex Murda p- person of interest. I kind of hit on this yesterday a bit about that, you know, when I was talking about him being arrested because he was just arrested for, he was just arrested for, you know, kind of keeping the funds illegal use of funds that he, and fraud insurance fraud on his housekeeper longtime housekeeper and so he was arrested for it but they but now more is in the news so I definitely wanted to kind of continue where I left off in reference to this person of interest and so now Alex Murdoch it's more coming out that he is definitely a person of interest with his on his kids. Okay, let me share a little here. Where are we at? Change that. Uh, shoot, I gotta, gotta already have that up. So here, this is one article. Alex was always a person of interest in his wife's son's double murder. This is his lawyer saying that, that he was always a person of interest. Well, he did find them late that night after coming home. According to him, he called 911. And even that is skeptical on that whole thing. And so Alex Alex Murdoch's lawyer does admit that he, he is... He's always been a person of interest in this. Now, again, that doesn't mean that he is necessarily the suspect, but he's always been a person of interest. There's a lot surrounding this family. There's a lot surrounding this family. Without a shadow of a doubt, there's a lot surrounding this family. When it comes to the whole, like multiple people being killed and not knowing what's happening to what's happened to them. And so now his attorney has said, yep, it is true that he has been a person of interest. And so on Thursday, which was yesterday, he was arrested for the second time. He was arrested for the second time in a month. And he had been the one who called 911, I'm reading this, after finding the bullet riddled bodies of wife Maggie, 52, and 22 year old son, Paul. And so why would he do this? Well, they're saying that he is, that they kind of knew about this misappropriate of funds within the law, within his law firm and that they were going to out him. So again, more is going to come out, but he was just taken away from, he was just, uh, he had to resign from the law firm because of stealing from them. And so, the South Carolina law enforcement, they said, they have said that from the get-go that Alex was a person of interest in these slayings. And so, hmm, more will definitely come out. But this whole story around Alex is like, it is so messed up in so many ways, so many ways as to what has happened in a little bit of time so as you know he was in a drug rehab he was in a drug rehab and right as soon as he got out that's when they arrested him for the insurance fraud of his what i what i talked about yesterday if you were on of the insurance fraud of his longtime housekeeper and so what we don't know is there is not a, do it, what we don't know is is there enough proof to go much much deeper in this and so 
you know, he was arrested on Thursday for stealing more than four million from his from his late housekeeper's insurance settlement, which was supposed to go to her kids. And they too have said, we've got nothing. And so now we don't really know why this is going on, you know, or how much they know about it. And that's what exactly, that's where we're left now. That's where exactly where we are left with because It's been a whole world of what is going on. You know, first his wife and son are killed. His son is in a boating accident right before that son that passed away is in a boating accident earlier before that death that he was what all accounts shortly showing is he was guilty of driving that or driving that boat super drunk way over the legal limit and causing harm and one person died and then it was so quick how his family attorney because this whole family is full of attorneys they they, that's why they're so well known and they're known to have a lot of power they're known to have a lot of power around that and so when it comes to the wife Maggie and son Paul being killed, they don't have any suspects right now. He's probably only right now. He's only a person of interest and that's it. No more than that. And so, you know, you got, you got Paul and Matt, you got the boat in accident and then Paul and Maggie's death. Paul was the one that was driving the, the boat. Then you got Paul and Maggie's death, right? And since those murders in June, he's been fired from his job because Maggie and Paul were died in, in June. He's been fired from his job, which he was also part owner of the family's law firm. He's accused of embezzlement, shot in the head that he created on his own. Okay. Hmm. And then he had to go, go to rehab for sus, substance abuse and then arrested twice. Hmm. And before this Thursday arrest, he was accused and and by the person who did it, but he was accused of hiring a hitman to help him commit suicide so his surviving son could cash in on a $10 million life insurance. So he tried to have himself killed so that the insurance can go to his only surviving child. Hmm. That's not good. And now he's charged with insurance fraud and filing a false report because he said he called 91 and said I was shot in the head. I, I pulled over to fix a tire or something like that. And someone came up, pulled up and said, do you need any help? And then boom, come to find out. He actually hired that hitman to do that. It's probably going to be a movie on this one. You can guarantee that. It might be a lifetime movie, really. And so Alex, he he admitted to opioid addiction, and that's why he had to go to rehab. And he has not entered any plea on any of these charges. So that's what we know so far on the Alex Murda person of interest in the death of his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul. So the last story I want to share with you, this story is an unsettling story. And I'll tell you why I I did this story. Part of this channel is to make you aware of how bad people can be and to hopefully help you have your, have your alarm bells on when needed. And sometimes things are going to happen. You probably can't even get out of. And this particular case is so, so this is such a, a sad, sad case. So this man is sentenced to death for setting ex-wife on fire during a live stream. And what she was live streaming on is what in, in China, they have their own version of TikTok. That's what she was live streaming on was their version of TikTok. And so he was convicted to death. So he's sentenced to death for murdering his ex-wife. He set her on fire while she was live streaming. This is this is one of the worst things. 
And when this case went on, he was convicted a couple years ago, and this is where he, this is what the sentencing was. But when this case was first brought to light, this there was a nationwide outrage over domestic violence because again, the wife was not taken serious. And if you, it kind of makes me think of the Gabby Petito August twelfth body cam footage where. They were kind of citing, and you can see it. You can even see it on this channel. They were kind of citing with Brian Laundry, kind of you know citing with her because she did admit, uh, you know, of hitting him barely or something like that. And so now you have this again, where granted this happened before Gabby Petito, but because it's so fresh in my mind, I saw some similarities between the two. And so she died after he put gasoline on her and set her on fire in September of last year. And she suffered burns on 90% of her body, and but she died two weeks later. And this is so, this was an ex-wife. It wasn't his current wife. But there was so much, there was a history of violence in this marriage. There was a history of violence towards her. In June of 2020, only months before she was murdered at her father's house, at her father's home, this is where, like, it was like there was so much history of these, of the domestic violence that he did to her. And that's why it's so sad about this whole thing. And so... This is also what caused a nationwide outrage over domestic violence. Trying to, you know, it's so easy to try to brush this stuff off. It's so easy to try to brush this stuff off. And, so you know, you never know until after the fact, like, man, should more have been done? You know, it's never okay to hit anyone but let alone domestic violence wise it's 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 cruel it's cruel and the court says this was a quote from from the court his crime was extremely cruel and the social impact was extremely bad and the court statement was calling for severe punishment with the law and when this happened when this happened, that it actually occurred, this is where it's like everyone needs to be aware that this stuff can happen. This stuff can happen. And, you know, her death triggered an online outcry of let's keep, the, let's number one, keep this in the spotlight. Let's know what's going on in these rural communities as well because that, that's what this, that's where they live in China, in this rural community. And especially in where, you know, in ethnic, you know, in, in when, when this happens, how do you bring light to this stuff? And especially being that she was a mother of two children and she was known for her upbeat post on the rural lifestyle, and she was praised for not using makeup in her videos, which had millions of likes. She was she was becoming a she was a, a an influencer in China. And here's the thing: China only criminalized domestic violence five years ago. Five years ago. So this wasn't something that they've you know this was going on long before they took this serious. And according to a statistic, around one in four married Chinese women have experienced domestic abuse. And this is according to a 2013 survey by the All China's All China Women's Federation. You know, and according to activists, they say victims repeated complaints are often not taken seriously by police until it is too late. You know, because the police were throwing it off as this is a private family matter. Well, you know what? Number one, 
men hitting women is cowardly. Women hitting men is cowardly. No need. You're supposed to be loving each other. No need beating on each other. That I mean, but the anger gets the best of people. And sometimes they don't even know how it got there. And so here we are again. Well, he won't be doing it again because he's going to be getting the life sentence, the death penalty. And so we wish that this was prevented and it wasn't. And now he's getting what he deserves. Now, I don't know if I'm a fan of the death penalty, to be completely honest with you, but I'm not hating the courts for doing it either. I, to me, it's not my call. But, you know, if you do take a life, what does the Bible say? I am a big believer in the Bible, that's for sure. But I couldn't pull the plug to pull the I couldn't do it myself. So that's where it's like, I don't even know what side I'm on when it comes to death penalty or spending the rest of your life in prison. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me today. This is top stories around true crime. And hey, let me know in the comments what you would like me to report on. I Whether I'm sharing top stories or, or covering a case, let me know. I'm glad to update you. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. I look forward to serving you again. Have an amazing day. Peace.